The Christchurch Muslim community is still seeking out people who were at the mosques during the shooting attacks to see if they need counselling. As more and more people come forward to tell their stories, community leaders say there are others who may have kept away from the hospital and the mosque since the attack out of fear or because they don't have physical injuries. ACC confirmed today that there are 12 people that are not covered for their mental injuries, but it says counselling will be available to all. Alex Perite and cameraman Stan McFerrier report. For some people in the Al Noor Mosque during the attack, like Josef Vohar, it's a sheer miracle they survived at all. I was underneath the dead bodies. I could have got easily, I could have got a shot easily, but he did not will it for me to get a shot. It was maybe for some reason that I got saved. I missed the bullets because I could feel the bullets on the one who was front of me. I could feel the bullets actually pushing on the body. I could feel that it's, it's missed my head, it's missed my chest, it's missed my leg. Many victims say the mental scars are deep and when they shut their eyes, it all keeps coming back. Abdul Rahiman was in the mosque and managed to escape out one of the back doors. That incident of that day is just still fresh in my mind. And uh, when I came here, actually I came here on Saturday when the mosque was open to the public uh, with my son and uh, we did a small prayer inside. And now, like, uh, this is the first time for me to come this area from the door which I managed to escape, yeah. And it's, yeah, I don't have words. Like, I just feel that everything is all, well, you know, fresh. Everything is happening, going to, is it still happening. We're just outside that back door where Abdul and many others managed to escape. They came running along here uh, towards a wall. Abdul says many of them were young and fit enough to be able to jump straight over that wall, but he couldn't manage. So he hid in the car park amongst the parked cars uh, to escape the gunman and at least hide from him. He encouraged many others to do the same. We did speak to another man, a taxi driver, who also couldn't manage to get over the wall. He came running down this pathway here and he stood on this old white bridge brittle plastic chair. It crushed underneath him. He eventually found some wood and used that to get up and over the wall. Meanwhile, Abdul, who was hiding amongst the cars, was eventually rescued by the police. He says, unfortunately, many of his friends weren't so lucky. I had some friends and a couple of family, they already they got injured and they're still in the hospital. Yeah, a lot of friends, they have the school, yeah. Up till now, the support we have been uh, given by the Christchurch community as a whole, it has been quite marvellous, tremendous, I think. And like the police force, they are doing a very good job from the time they rescued us from the car park and they took us to the hospital and even now. And I think like uh, we need this continued support, like, um, yeah, and some counselling maybe those affected. The Ministry of Social Development says it's helped 628 applicants paying out $159,000 so far. Phil Riley from ACC says it's received just over 100 injury claims, 53 are due to gunshot wounds. And of the 27 claims for mental injuries, there are 12 people that don't qualify for cover. But Mr Riley assured they will get help. Support is available, and I think that's the key message, that council and support is available, regardless of cover of ACC at this point. What I described was the boundaries of ongoing entitlements. Uh, ACC covers for mental injury if it's a result of a physical injury or if it's in the course of employment. That is the current boundaries, but I stress again, council is available for those that need it. Abdul says he is getting some counselling. He's had one session last week and has another one tomorrow. But he will need ongoing support. And he's thankful his cousin, Hussein Bucks, is visiting from Sydney. My concern was my brother. So, considering my brother and the people, and I said it's sort of like an icon, and I have come here to pay my tribute. I'm really moved by his kind words and... Yeah, I really appreciate for him to come and meet me here and actually he just came to meet me here and see the places and just to, you know, pay tribute. And as Abdul comes to terms with what has happened, he says family is what's important and he's taking time off just to be with people like Hussein. Come and visit us for a while. And thank you very get much Get out for of this, and... you know, get over it. But I think is the wound is still, you know, take time to heal. Oh yeah, definitely. Yes yeah. and yes. But I hope, I pray to Allah that this will not ha ever happen in New Zealand anymore.